evening, everybody. Welcome to the Planning Committee. My name is Councillor Anita Leach, and I'm the Chair of the Committee. My role this evening is to ensure that the Committee runs smoothly, having regard to procedure, behaviour and ethics. To explain who the rest of the people on the table here tonight are, to my immediate right is the Council Solicitor, who will give advice to the Committee on any procedural or legal matters that might arise. To my left are the Council's Planning Officers, Highway Engineer and Environmental Health Officer, who will present the applications that... Okay, can everybody hear me now? Okay, thank you. Even the people at the back? Thank you. <laughs> well done. To my left are the Council's Planning Officers, Highway Engineer and Environmental Health Officer who will present the applications this evening and give any technical advice to the committee which may be sought. The rest of the people you will see down both sides of the tables are the elected members who will consider the applications this evening and make the decisions. Before each application is considered, there will be a short presentation by the planning officers. In the event that an application has received a qualifying petition signed by 25 signatures or more, one representative of the petition will be invited to address the committee in support of the petition for up to five minutes. If a petitioner addresses the committee, then the applicant or their agent will be invited to make representations to the committee in support of their application, again for up to five minutes. However, if a petitioner has not addressed the committee, then the applicant or their agent will not be invited to make any representations. A ward councillor can address the committee in relation to an application. The ward councillor may speak on behalf of the residents. However, once the ward councillor has returned to the public gallery, they may not return to take part in any further debate that may be followed by the committee. The application will then be open to debate and discussion by members of the planning committee who will then make a decision on the application. The order of tonight's agenda may vary subject to the numbers of people who are here in relation to a specific agenda item and subject to the committee agreeing to the order being varied. If a site visit is requested and approved by the committee, then that matter will not be discussed any further this evening and people are able to leave should they wish to. <coughs> committee, can I please have approval of the minutes on pages 1 to 30? Approved, Chair. Thank you. Page 12, item 77, the vote is in question recorded. I voted against that. I believe it should be 11 and 1. Page 12, item 77. Okay, we do recall that was the case and we'll have the minutes amended. Thank you for coming to very good. Right, anything else on the minutes? Can we approve them? Thank you. Are there any declarations of interest? Christina? Chair, um, item 12, uh, better planning to facilitate cycling. Uh, a number of the recycled uh, forum, um, where this has been discussed on the other occasions. Thank you. That'll be clear, additional interest and make the room for uh, agenda item uh, 10, as I am uh, board director of the agenda. I'm also going to declare an interest in agenda item 10, Melrose and Thornbridge Heights, in view of the activity uh, that I've had discussing this with uh, both Magenta and also with uh, local residents. So uh, the deputy chair will actually be covering the meeting um, during that, that item, I'll be leaving the room. <coughs> Do we have any requests for site visits? Kathy? 
I'd like to request a site visit for Agenda Item 8, Land North West of Bond in Land Gayton, in order for the Planning Committee to fully appreciate the extremely small plot of land which cannot be ascertained from the plan and also the adverse impact on the area. Thank you, Kathy. David? Yeah, thank you, Chair. I'd like to ask for a site visit for Item 7, Lisa Road. There are a number of issues relating to access, uh, etc., which safety issues, which I think can be appreciated by having a site visit. Thank you. Martin? Um, thank you, Chair. Um, I'd like to request a site visit for number four, uh, item number four, 11 C Line Road. Uh, there's a lot of investment in it, so it's a small application, so I think it'll be where the committee can go on to do the site visit. Okay, so we'll be announced for site visits for agenda item four, seven, and eight. Committee, are we happy that there are going to be site visits? Yes, thank you. Agreed. Okay, uh, for the uh, general public, item four is Seabank Road, Egremont, which we'll, we won't be discussing this evening. Agenda item seven, which is grazing land at Lisa Road, Wallasey, which we won't be discussing. And agenda item eight, land northwest to Walmanap Gayton. None of those items will be discussed any further, so if you would like to leave now, you're more than welcome to do so. We'll just wait a couple of minutes while you do. Likewise, you're welcome to stay. <coughs> If people in the back would like to move forward now, then that might help with your hearing. Committee, in view of the number of people that are here for agenda items 9, 10 and 11, I'd like to bring those forward if you're in agreement with that. Thank you. Okay, if we move to agenda item 9, then Matthew, could we have a presentation, please? Planning permission is sought for the erection of six dwellings on land east of the water tower and the pump house. A reserve matters application was approved in 2008, which granted permission for 14 dwellings across the wide site. This involved the erection of six dwellings at the boundary road frontage and a further eight dwellings at the rear of the site. A separate consent for the residential conversion of the pump house was also granted planning permission. In 2011, a revised application for the development of the Bangley Road frontage was approved for four dwellings, a reduction of two units from the previously approved six. That permission has now been implemented. This current proposal also proposes a reduction in the number of units on this part of the site, from eight as previously approved down to six. Therefore, the total number of units across the entire site will now be 10 instead of 14. The layout across this part of the site will also be amended. Instead of four sets of semi-detached dwellings running linearly across the site, there will now be six detached dwellings, three running parallel to Hill Road, and three at a 90 degree, 90 degree angle looking into the site. The proposed dwellings are three storey, with the second floor contained entirely in the roof space. Dwellings of a similar height were approved across the site in 2008. The site is designed as, is designated as primarily residential in the unitary development plan. The proposed dwellings are considered to be of a scale that fit in well with the locality. All separation distances are comfortably achieved both within the site and in terms of the relationship with adjoining properties. Access to the site is via boundary road as previously approved and access arrangements remain unchanged. As this application seeks approval for, approval for a reduced number of units on the site, and having regard to the planning history of the site, particularly the 2008 Commission, which has been implemented, the proposed development is considered to be acceptable. The scale and appearance of the new dwellings and the amended layout of the site are considered to be improvements on the earlier Commission. The application is recommended for approval and there is a qualifying petition of rejection. Thank you. Is the lead petitioner here? Would they like to speak on this? Yes, Simon. Okay, could you come forward, please? Um, tell you what, yeah, give us a real 
Would you like to sit here? If I could uh, just ask you to state your name and we have up to five minutes to speak. I'll let you know when you've got about a minute left. Thank you very much. Thank you. <coughs> Jennifer James. Flame Creek Reservoir Water Tower is Grade 2 listed, built in 1866, an historic landmark and part of Birkenhead's social history of health and welfare provision. The suggested plans will compromise its character for everyone who lives and walks in the area. Residents would like reassurances about um, the design of the houses, previous contamination of the site, and the access problems uh, created by a close of um, what would have been 15 houses, but now presumably um, will be 13. Though we're all rather confused about the um, change in numbers. According to the proposal, the heritage and the access statements, the house height is supposed to be minimised. The layout non-continuous and highly designed. Given that the ground falls away towards Hill Road, the bulk of the proposed buildings, with four bedrooms and steeply pitched roofs for dormer windows, giving a third floor in the roof space, are not minimised and will appear visually overbearing from viewpoints in Hill Road. From surrounding roads, the six houses will appear as two continuous rows of three houses each. Plots six, five and four, three closely placed houses, are lined up directly with the tower, as we've just been told, at 90 degrees. Thus, views of the tower will be masked for residents and walkers at the north end of Hill Road. The quality of design and proposed materials are neither sensitive nor imaginative enough for a site of such an historic stone building. There is also continued concern about potential damage to the handsome Victorian sandstone curtilage walls, a battered construction which is not often seen, topped by a fine growth of course, which many people using the area enjoy seeing. Contamination. Residents remain unconvinced that hot spots of serious contamination have been dealt with to a sufficient depth of ground to make the site safe for receptors and pathways. It is believed topsoil only was removed from the concrete floor, which is what remains from the former settlement tank. Access problems. Residents on Boundary Road are very exercised about an increase to the current problems of waste collection from and traffic movement within the site. Plans for six more houses will mean that a total of, I believe, 15 houses, each with up to three bins and most likely two cars per household, will be using a site that already has problems of access, although with many fewer residents living there. This is a very particular site and should not be allowed to turn into <coughs> another bit of Wirral's undistinguished infill building. Thank you very much. Thank you for being so succinct. Thank you. Would the applicant or agent like to speak on this? Would you like to come forward, please? This application is for the second and final phase of planned regeneration of the land surrounding the <coughs> Flavourick Hill water tower. 
The development site already has, as explained in the intro, an outline consent for 14 detached and semi-detached houses. This final phase is currently a derelict hard stand, an eyesore. But please note that this site, again, as your colleague has outlined, already has the benefits of an existing outline approval for a row of eight semi-detached houses. Following careful consideration and consultation with your officers, it's now decided to apply today for a development consisting of six number four bedroom detached houses, each with link garages, but this being two number dwellings less than that is already approved. Obviously that therefore has an impact on the traffic plan that would have been installed and so have eight dwellings be constructed. I am aware, or we are aware, of the local concerns concerning the, this fresh application. And I believe these centre around matters concerning traffic, site contamination, impact of the development, especially the conservation and listed water tab, height of the proposed, bin storage and noise. I would remind the committee that my client, the developer, has already completed the refurbishment and reinstatement of the dwellings around the water tower and has commenced development on Boundary Road of the two detached houses. In response to these concerns, may I refer to your officer's committee report. Under the terms of the planning legislation, local and national guidance, the officer's report addresses each of the concerns raised in the objection and either recommends an approval or raises no objection in every case. However, may I specifically refer to the concerns raised with heritage, conservation, the impact of the proposed on the listed structure, the surround and the surrounding buildings, and the height of the proposed. Before submitting this application, our client and the designers consulted with the planning and conservation offices and met to present and discuss a pre-application before this proposal was submitted. The proposed L-shaped courtyard of six houses, rather than the row of semi-detached, was felt to be more in keeping with the conservation area and the, the, the close proximity of the listed structure. The massing and scale, the two-storey height with accommodation within the roof space, which I would quote, the highest ridge height being 9.8 metres, on house type 2 and 9.5 metres on house type 1, that being the same as the older property's height on Hill Road, were all discussed in detail. The spacing and offset distances of the dwellings, the materials to be used were all discussed in also greater detail and considered by your officers to be acceptable before this application was submitted. In conclusion, may I quote directly from your officers' report? which outlines, which in detail outlines the proposed, uh, the, the proposed, I, I apologize, um, I quote, the proposed dwellings are considered to be of a scale commensurate with the surrounding property and therefore have no adverse impact on the area, i.e. they are the same scale and height. It is considered that the proposed layout and dwelling type will not result in significant loss of privacy, daylight or sunlight to the surrounding neighbourhood properties and will not be visually overbearing or prominent when viewed from adjoining properties or Hill Road. The proposed dwellings are large properties and reflect a simple modern design that will not detract from the adjacent listed building. The proposed dwelling will be in keeping with the character of the area the site layout will be consistent with the existing street scene and will provide similarly scaled dwellings in a similar separation distances to those of the existing properties surrounding the site. Could this, I ask you to just summarise that because it just come to the end and of the time? Right to my last sentence. Right, thank you. This being without compromising the views of the listed building. I thank you for your attention. Um, can I just advise committee that um, we have had detailed plans um, approved and not outlined plans approved for this application. Okay, is there a ward council that would like to speak on this? Do you want to come forward, please? Yeah. Just for the minute, if you can state your name, please. 
Um, Councillor George Davis, Ward Councillor for Courtenwood. Um, I, while I understand everything that the um, council officers have said tonight, I fully understand that. And I have spoken with the resident before we actually came in here. Uh, I find it difficult to understand sometimes, uh, and I suppose, how it's been developed. Um, the fact that eight years ago, um, we had the case on the first of the our doorstep. Sorry. The application um, appeared on our doorstep some eight years ago, and a lot of detailed discussions took place, obviously because of the Great Two Building, um, which is the water tower. Um, and since then, um, and one of the things that I want to really dwell on a little bit is that some people there, and in particular the people who live on the site, have been living on the building site um, for those amount of years. I think most members of some of the members in this um, on planning now actually attended the site visit when we had that up there uh, and will remember it vividly. Uh, now, okay, recessions call, recessions call, and um, I can understand that as well. Um, but I think to actually put up with living on a building site for some nearly 10 years um, is something that I've got great concerns about. I've quite some assurance from the developer which is not the plan as I understand that, that they, they will um, uh, definitely try and alleviate that problem. I think in the, in the late list that's come out um, today, one of the main concerns um, is the, the added condition, um, which is non-development shall take place until the scheme works for the improvements of the vehicle access to the site from Boundary Road has been submitted to and approved in writing by the local planning authority. The scheme shall include the provision of pedestrian drop curves and tactile bathing. The development shall not be first occupied until the works have been completed as agreed with the local planning authority. That gives me some, um, some you know, hope, I suppose, especially on because I know I keep on going back. There's two issues here. One is the view from Hill Road. The other one is the people actually living on the site. And then the other side of that is the people who live on this road and the views they've had. Now, I don't think anyone can turn around, especially me, and turn around and say, I don't want quality housing built on the road. I do want quality housing built, but it's got to be done with the consent and help of the people. So just, I understand that this is already being um, up to from planning, it is a reduced number, I fully understand that, and I don't think anything I can do in terms of that. But I just ask for the conditions that have been highlighted also by um, Dr. Michael tonight, that they are maintained and looked after as we move forward, and we move forward with progress very quickly, please. Thank you. Thank you, George. Um, can I open this up to committee? Any comments? Steve? Um, obviously, um, this is in the world I represent, and I am very familiar with the site, as, as you would expect the world councillor to be. So, um, it has had a, a long drawn out planning history, as, as George refers to, and that's added to frustration. And the people who were consulted probably originally on the application. Uh, some of those individuals have changed and some of them remain uh, alongside it. But I think in fairness to the developers who've been involved with, with the original application and, and, and this subsequent application, they do seem to have been tried to have been considered to the nature of the site. And it is a very prominent site in the middle, Flavic Tower. Flavic Tower is not the only listed building, by the way. The pump house adjacent uh, to the tower is also a listed building. And some refurbishment from work was done on that, on, on that building as part of, if you like, not planning gain, but as part of the desire from, uh, from residents. I think some of the uh, issues almost negate themselves. I think if people know Hill Road, if you approach Hill Road coming up Upton Road, much of the site is obscured by the very massively high sandstone wall which protects uh, some sort of reservoir fit in there. So that, that in its way self obscures the, the rear view of, of Flavitt Tower. So 
for me uh, and for most people involved, it, the, the major view is that from uh, Barney Road uh, and the front, front aspect. The other issue that does cause some concern, there have been other developments there, there's a very successful judo club, if people know, which adds to the uh, traffic movements on, on, on certain occasions. Is this sort of access onto uh, Barney Road? Which has, a normal, which has an informal status at the moment. I, I'm, I'm not sure whether the ownership of that is with the water board or the water works, or whether it owns uh, what United Utilities are going to be uh, or whether that's in the development site. So control um, and think of that is maybe not um, an issue for plan and ownership, but I think that's given some concern for residents because it's almost an informal entrance to what would be a formal site. And I think one of the questions that was asked to me, will the whole access and egress eventually become adopted and be maintained by the council? Because if it isn't, then it, it will be almost a, a, a lovely development. I think it's a very good development, a good development, but then separated from the road frontage by a piece of informal land that, that nobody uh, particularly cares or, or worries about. And I know it's not directly a planning issue, but that is cause of concern. And I know that, but we have put, as George says, the late objection does ask for some formality to the egress and access to, 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 be, to be conformed with. Uh, but by, by and large, um, I think in an ideal world, I would have liked that piece of land to become a smaller parkland and, 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 and open utility space. But I understand the demands for housing, I understand the needs for housing and quality housing uh, on the river, and I think this, on, on balance, it is a, a better development than the previous application, which did uh, find favour. I think the one thing that we would go to the wall on is if any of these applications were withdrawn and the, the, the dreaded apartment blocks were, were added into the equation. I think that would be certainly a step too far for, for me uh, in planning terms, but I believe most of the problems that, that are there um, can be erased, uh, but I understand people's need to cherish this site given its prominence. And I do hope in some way we can, by naming the road or, or some sort of you know, commemorative sort of thing, we, we can actually embellish the history of the site. I, I don't know who, who the architect of the tower was, for example. We could name the road after the architect and things like that. So, on balance, as a member of the planning committee and not a ward councillor, it's it's an application that I think I'm going to have to have to support. Okay, Matthew. Uh, thank you, Chair. Um, just a couple of uh, quick questions because I'm not quite sure I 100% understand this. Are we meant to? Is this is this a new application uh, that we judge in its own right, or is it one we look at with the previous history in mind? Thank you, through you, Chair. This is a standalone application. It's not a reserve matter. It's an app in its own right. So you are considering it on its individual merits. But obviously, the planning history of the site is a material consideration when you're looking at determining this application. Okay, it's just because I know in the report that there's no requirement um, for affordable housing on site, despite the fact it's over five units. And that's in reference to the fact that the overall numbers, I think, have dropped. I'm just wondering if, uh, in, in relation to the whole site, do we know what the number of affordable housing units are now as a result, or have they somehow dropped out of providing any? The, uh, the, there was no affordable housing on the site because of the works that were, that were required to the, um, to the listed building, which is the, uh, the square building at the front of the site. Uh, that's a grade two listed building and the refurbishment works that were required. All of these can convert it into residential use now. Um, the rest of the, the, rest of the, the site wouldn't have been tenable with affordable housing. So that was looked at back in 2008. Um, and that we have revisited again as part of this application. Okay, and, and but a separate sort of viability assessment wasn't done on this application, or was it? It was. It was. Okay, cool. Thank you. Hey, David. Yes, thank you, Chair. As one of, I think, the two people who were probably on the planning committee that uh, approved this some time ago, this is a far better development than the one we approved last time, and I would have no hesitation in supporting what I believe is an appropriate development for that site. 
Was ist denn? Das ist ein Jungs, wenn du das hast, du hast eine kleine Applikation, yes. It's much improved applications, what the printer can put forward. Excuse me for not having a microphone, it was taken away. <laughs> but most of the points that Councillor Fox raised in the elevation of the property and the walls and everything else, it's only one side where you'll actually see anything for this particular development. And given the 14 conditions now that are put in place, I think everything's been answered. But the no objection Thank you. Are, are you moving that day? Yeah, I'll be quite happy to move the application. Okay, the officer's recommendation is to approve. It's got a mover and a seconder. Oh, and the officer's recommendation is to approve subject to the conditions listed and the extra condition on the late list. All those in favour? Against? That's carried. Thank you. We now move to agenda item 10, which is pages 81 and 92, the Bell Roads and Thorn Ridge Heights. We have a presentation, please, Matthew. This, app this application seeks permission for amendments to an application that was approved in January this year. That permission granted 23 houses and 30 apartments, a total of 53 residential units across the site. Um, I'll just show you the, um, the layout that was approved um, earlier this year. So this, this horseshoe of development at the top of the site, this was where the um, 30 apartments were, and then um, the, the rest of the site was to be developed with houses. A new road coming off Stavedale Road. This road here at the top is an existing road. And then an extension to um, um, uh, Fender View Road um, at the bottom. So that, that was what was approved um, in January um, of this year. And this, this is what's um, uh, being sought sort of for now. So the current proposal seeks permission for a reduced number of units going from 53 down to 38. 34 houses, um, so the majority of the site now around here uh, will be developed with 34 houses and a block of four apartments. This block down here at the south of the site is the, is the apartment block. The apartment block at the south of the site would be two storey and would have the appearance of a pair of semi detached dwellings with two apartments on the first floor and two apartments on the ground floor. The remainder of the site will be developed with two storey housing and as a mix of semi detached units or small terraces with three units. All units will now be two storey, removing some three storey units as previously approved. This is considered to be more in keeping with the wider locality. All standard separation distances achieved, uh, both within the site and having regards to the relationship with neighbouring properties. The majority of the new houses uh, will be served by a new road off Stavedale Road, so that's this road here, which says New Road, uh, and then uh, via direct private driveways direct off Stavedale Road, so this, uh, this, this group of houses here. Each unit has off street parking provision. The four apartments, so that's this block down here, and then the six other houses um, down here, uh, via an extended Fender View Road. Um, again, all units have off street parking. The apartments will also have cycle parking and bin storage provided. 
On the earlier approval, 14 units would have been um, accessed by Fender View Road. So this application reduces that number by 4 to 10, um, and, and with a consequent reduction in vehicular movements. An existing road to the north of the site, uh, so that's this bit here, uh, will allow for access for five dwellings at this part of the development. All units will have private amenity space by way of private gardens. This current proposal would result in 15 fewer units to that approved in January. It would also reduce the number of units served off Fender View Road. All units will be built with brick and condition relating to materials will ensure the brick used will blend with existing properties. Trees on site are to be removed and replaced with ones more appropriate for residential gardens and located away from sewer easements. Having regard to the permission for 53 granted in January this year, which remains extant, this application is considered to be acceptable and would actually sit more comfortably with the existing layout of the area. The proposals are recommended for approval and there is a qualified petition of objection. Thank you. Is the lead petitioner which would want to please speak? Can you state your name, please, and your address? And you have up to five minutes to speak. Martin Bernard. Martin Bernard. I love place. Is it possible I could just come over to the planning?
I'm not sure this can be changed and either have Femme be known as his always has been, which is a cool design with its own uh, ten inches. Or with a redesign of the plans, uh, the amount of traffic being fairly along the family and sexual load can be reduced to an acceptable number. So probably six or seven cars in the image. The petition is I went